Question 198 of Leak Code House Robber. So you're a professional house robber planning to rob houses along a street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security systems connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. So given an integer array nums representing the amount of money of each house, return the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. So in the question, what it's asking for is out of this nums array, what is the maximum number that we can obtain from this, making sure not to include adjacent values. So the output here is four, and the explanation is that we rob house one, then we skip the adjacent house, which is this value, two, and then we move on to three and we add those together. So one and three is equal to four. So let's jump into an explanation. So with this question, what it's asking for is it's asking for a maximum. So it's asking for an optimal. And when a question asks for an optimal, what we should initially think of is dynamic programming. And in this case, we're gonna be using bottom-up dynamic programming. So we're gonna utilize the smallest kind of solution in order to work out larger solutions. So we're gonna use solutions from sub-problems in order to generate the overall solution. Now I'll show you how that's done. So with DP bottom-up, we need a DP array. And our DP array is going to be an array of each house. So let's say we have indexes zero, one, two, and three. So we have four houses, which correlates to the houses that contain the cash. So we have one, two, three, and four, and we can just initialize these to zero. So the first step is to decide how much money can we steal from house one? Well, we can steal one, right? Because that's the maximum here. So we can set DP at zero equal to nums at zero. Let's move along. So how much can we steal from DP at one? So this value here, how much can we steal here? Well, we can either steal two or we can steal one but we can't steal both because they're adjacent houses. So we need to choose the maximum between the two, which is two. So it's gonna be max nums zero, nums at one. Now here's where it gets interesting. What is the maximum we can steal at this point in time? So we can steal three, and we can also steal the maximum achieved at zero index, which is one. Or we can just steal DP at index one, which is here. And this breaks down and makes the recurrence relation which is essentially what's going to allow us to solve each incremental problem until we reach the final solution. And that is going to be the maximum between nums at i plus dp at i minus two, so the maximum at the non-adjacent house, or that's going to be compared with dp at i minus one, so the adjacent house. So in this case, we have three and one, so that's four, compared to two. So we're gonna add four there. And on the last house, we can choose nums at i plus dp i minus two, so it's one plus two, so it can be three, or it can be dp at i minus one, which is four. And we're gonna choose the maximum here, so we're gonna choose four, and then all we need to do is just return this value. So dp at dp dot length minus one. So in the solution, we have a loop which loops from i is equal to two because we've carried out dp at zero and one here. So this is going to equate to o n, and then in terms of space, we are allocating space for this DP array, which is going to be the exact same length as the nums array. So that is going to be O of N as well. So in forming this solution, we need to look at the constraints to begin with, which is very important to do at the start of any question, just to see if we can resolve any edge cases straight away. And in this case, we have two. So if nums length is equal to zero, we need to return zero because we're not going to steal anything if there are no houses to steal from. Now, if nums.length is equal to one, we can just return nums at zero. So we can return the value that is within that house. So now we need to create the DP array. We can fill it with zero. Now we need to cover the base cases for this dynamic solution. And we said that dp at zero is going to be nums at zero. So it's going to be the value at the first house. dp at one is going to be the maximum between the first house and the second house. Because we can't have adjacent houses. And then we need to loop through the rest. So that i equal two because we've carried out zero and one. i needs to be less than nums.length i plus plus. So in here is where we add the recurrence relation. So that's going to be dp at i is equal to math.max 
it's going to be equal to numza i, so the current value plus its non adjacent house, so dp at i minus 2, so the maximum at the non adjacent house, or dp at i minus 1. So it's going to compare the two, find out the maximum, and then lastly, we can return dp at dp.length minus 1. Okay, let's see if that's worked. It's been accepted. Let's submit it. And there you have it.